Hi everyone, welcome to a tutorial on the Honeybee Add EarthTube component, which is a component, uh, a new component in Honeybee, which for the first time allows you to simulate Energy Plus EarthTubes using Honeybee. Now, before I get into the component itself and show you show you the component, let me just show you the basics which I've already set up on my Grasshopper Canvas for using this component. First, I've created three simple boxes and made those each of those boxes into a Honeybee Zone, as you can see here. So I've got three Honeybee Zones, Honeybee Zone 1, Honeybee Zone, uh, Honeybee Zone 2, and Honeybee Zone 3. Then I've got a, a custom schedule, an annual schedule, which has 8,760 values, one value for every year, uh, every hour of the year. Um, if you want to find out about how to create a custom schedule, there's a link at the top of this video, which will link you to Chris Mackey's excellent tutorial on custom schedules. And finally, I've got a schedule which I've taken from the Open Studio library. Now let's get into the component itself. So if you double click on the Grasshopper Canvas and go add earth tube, you'll see this component come up. Now the add earth tube component takes honeybee zones and for each honeybee zone, only one earth tube is added to that honeybee zone. And each of those earth tubes have the following properties, which start after the EPW file, which you have to put in. Um, each of these properties are assigned to the earth tube sequentially. Now, what do I mean by that? I'll show you. So if you connect, let's connect honeybee zone one and two, and also we'll need an EPW file. Now let's connect our schedules. So first let's connect the custom schedule which I've created and then also a schedule, the occupancy schedule of the small hotel storage pro zone program from the Open Studio Library. You can see the earth tubes that have been assigned to each zone and their properties by connecting the readme to a panel. So what do I mean by these properties and the schedules in particular? Um, sorry, what do I mean by these properties being assigned to the honeybee earth tubes sequentially? What I mean is that if you look here, the custom schedule is the first schedule and the first zone should be yes and the first zone is honeybee zone one if you come over here you'll see that honeybee zone one has an operation schedule named da -da 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 -da, which is the custom schedule and you'll see honeybee zone two has the small building uh the small hotel building occupancy schedule so each property here is a client is assigned sequentially so the first schedule is assigned to the first honeybee zone sorry the first schedule is assigned to the earth tube of the first honeybee zone and the second schedule is assigned to the earth tube of the second honeybee zone and so on and so forth this is this is also the same for all the other properties here which i won't go into um, because the documentation is um, self-explanatory and also uh, they are quite complicated. Which brings me to another uh, issue which I should bring up. Um, if you haven't used uh, Earth tubes in Energy Plus before, I really do strongly recommend that you take a look at the Energy Plus Earth Tube documentation. I've posted a link to that below this uh, video. Um, and have a read of that because Earth tubes in Energy Plus are quite complicated. That's why this component has so many different input properties. 
Um, so do take a look at that. So apart from these properties here, which are assigned sequentially um, to each earth tube, if you, for example, uh, have a third honeybee zone or another honeybee zone, and there's only two schedules or you know one property here and one property here, the default will be applied um, to the properties of that zone for which uh, no property has been specified. What I mean by that is with the third honeybee zone, the default schedule has been used, which is always on. And as you'll also see with the, um, uh, with the properties, all the defaults are being used because no properties are being assigned, except in the case of design flow rate, because, uh, no, there we go. Uh, some old values were with design flow rate there. So as you can see with all these, uh, earth, with all the earth tubes of each of all the zones, um, apart from the schedules, no properties have been assigned and therefore the defaults are assigned. So if you don't assign a property to a zone, the default will be used. Um, finally, I'd also like to point out that these three properties here are independent of the earth tubes, meaning that they are applied to all earth tubes in this component. So the soil condition, the condition of the ground surface and the pipe thermal dog conductivity are applied to all the earth tubes uh, in this component. Um, so you don't need to worry about uh, that uh, <coughs> naming, uh, making sure that your properties are in the correct order to your zones here. So now that we've added, um, let's just remove the third zone, remove the final zone. So now that we've added earth tubes to two honeybee zones, let's go ahead and simulate those earth tubes and what effect they have on those honeybee zones. So come up to honeybee run energy simulation, um, connect, these are, the output here is the, uh, the um, honeybee zones to which earth tubes have been added. Bring these uh, honeybee zones here and then also connect this one across here. Um, we need our EPW file. Sorry, it's getting a bit messy here. Pull that out. So honeybee zones, EPW file. Um, we need to balloon toggle. And as you will see, it will run. Now what I've actually done deliberately wrong here is that you won't be able to see any outputs from the, uh, from the earth tubes. Uh, sure, the, the sensible heating and cooling of the zone will change, but in order to see that in the first place, you need to specify the outputs that you want from this um, uh, Energy Plus simulation. So you're going to need this component here, Honeybee Generate EP Output. So come up to here. Um, oops, just stop that for a minute. And uh, the time step, let's set the time step to, uh, what's the time step? Okay, monthly is fine. So you'll need to set this, um, this zone HVAC params to toggle. So you'll need to set this to true. Just stop that simulation whites. Okay, it, um, just let it run its course. And then on that again. Okay, so now we can actually read the results. Um, so if you come up to uh, Honeybee read EP uh, HVAC result, connect the result file address. And what you'll see is 
because we, although we simulated three honeybee zones, sorry, I'll just delete that. Although we simulated three honeybee zones and we have a tree on sensible cooling of three outputs, you'll see with the earth tube cooling, so the cooling that was a, um, the earth tubes caused, uh, we actually only have two results, and that's because uh, earth tubes were only added to two zones. Likewise, with heating, we see the same effect. Now, the reason that uh, we're actually getting zero is I specified back here a design flow rate of zero, so that means that for both the earth tubes actually have no air flowing through them so of course they'll be useless so let's just fix that up quickly we'll set it to design flow rate of one cubic meter uh, cubed per second sorry one cubic meter per second of air I'll just rerun that and now we see that we actually get um, some values so um, that's the essence of how the earth tube component works. Now, if you want to do optimization with Galapagos using um, this earth tube component to optimize your earth tube, uh, let me show you how to actually just get these numbers because obviously this format here is, is not good for optimization. So you come up to Ladybug and you, oh, sorry, you come here, separate data, um, you input the list, Oh, I'm sorry, because this is actually a data tree, we first need to get the branch of the data tree. So come to, click on the canvas code tree branch. Um, we've got two branches, so that's one branch, and that's another branch. So that will be the first branch, and this will be the second branch. And as you can see here, now we've actually got the branches. So now we just want to get the numbers. We want to remove all the other, um, we want to remove everything else in the header so you can use it for optimization. Um, and there you go, you've, you've just got the numbers there. So that's uh, how you would um, get the numbers for a Galapagos optimization with the earth tube. Um, of course, it's even better if you can uh, just have one number, if you're looking at it from an annual perspective. So to do that, we just come back here and we set the time step to annual and let it run. And as you can see, you've got your um, in kilowatt hours over the whole year, the cooling uh, that each earth, earth tube caused in the zone. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, I hope you found it useful. If you have any user requests to improve this component or you find any bugs with the component or you're having technical difficulties, if you double click on the component, you can see my email up here and you can contact me about that. Um, thank you for watching and uh, I hope you enjoy the component.